In this video, we're going to have a look at Enermax Max Titan 1050 watt power supply. New GPUs like Radeon 6800 XT, 6900 XT, or GeForce RTX 3080, 3090 require much more power delivery than the previous generation of GPUs, therefore more powerful power supplies are needed. If you want to build a stable and quiet system, you will need at least 800 watt power supply to be able to cover their load peaks, especially if you want to combine them with 12 or 16 core CPUs, and use the ones which have at least gold power efficiency rating to make sure their fan doesn't have to spin fast during the load and therefore create additional noise and you want them to consume as little electricity as possible because you have to pay for it. In this chart we're going to have a look at different efficiency certifications for power supplies. The efficiency requirements numbers differ for every level from 80 plus to 80 plus titanium based on how many volts are used in the grid. You will achieve slightly higher efficiency when connected to 230 volt grid in Europe than in US which uses 115 volts. The power supply in this video has the highest titanium level certification which means that it will draw least amount of power from the wall when outputting the equal amount of power to your PC compared to lower rated power supplies. It will also stay cooler because less amount of power will be transferred into heat during the transformation from 115 or 230 volts to 12 volts or 5 volts which is what computers use and that's why the fan wouldn't have to spin so fast if at all. In the long term you'll pay less on the electricity bill and save a few more trees in the process which is not bad. So I guess it's time to open the box and take a look what's inside. This is all you get inside the box, a power supply in a branded sack, we'll look at it in more detail later. Then 18 power cables, all modular and individually sleeved. 25 wire clips, these are for 5 wires. And 45 wire clips, these are for 4 wires. Cooler Genie user's manual and a Cooler Genie. Cooler Genie is a remote case fan controller. These three cables belong to it and also these two double-sided velcro stickers and two magnetic stickers belong to it. Then six plastic straps, four long velcro straps and four short velcro straps, four screws for attaching the power supply to the case, main power cord, and the manual, which is in 13 languages. Let's take a closer look at the modular power cables. First one is the 24 pin main ATX power cable. Then there are these two CPU 8 pin power cables. The second 8 pin can be divided into two 4 pins. Then eight PCI Express 8 pin power cables. Each can be divided into one 6 pin and one dual pin. Four SATA cables, each has 
four SATA connectors. So altogether you have 16 SATA connectors available. Two Molex power cables. Each has four Molex connectors. Altogether you have eight Molex connectors available. And the last one is the reduction cable from Molex to small four pin. Let's take a look at the cables again, now from a different perspective with the measurements. All of the cables are a little bit longer than what is stated on the box, which is a good thing. The main CPU power cable is 74cm long. 24 pin to the motherboard is 64cm long and so are rest of the PCI Express cables. Molexes and SATA cables are 55 centimeters long and they can be extended so they can reach up to 95 centimeters. When we look at the cable more closely we can see that the individual sleeving is really nicely done. It helps you to lower the thickness of the cable at the place of its bending when doing the cable management inside your case. Therefore, it allows for sharper angles when bent and if done properly, it looks really nice. On the other hand, some people don't like using them because it takes longer to manage than single sleeved cables and when using the single sleeved cables, no clips are necessary. Basically, this is for people who don't mind playing with it and who like to customize the look of the inside of their case to the max. Using the cable clips is really easy. All you need to do is to push each wire into the hole in the clip and it falls in easily. So let's do it. As you see, it took just a few seconds. Some people think it's difficult to remove, and it is, if you don't know how to do it. Because if you try it at once, it doesn't want to go. So what you need to do is to pull each of the wires individually, and then it's easy. So. Now you know. Cooler Genie is a system fan controller. It can control up to three case fans, which can be connected by these three connectors. All of them are four pins, that means they support PWM. On top, there are these two ports. This one is for CPU fan and this one can be connected to the motherboard for the PWM control. At the bottom there is another connector. This is proprietary connector which is connected to the power supply itself and it delivers the power to this fan controller. On the other side there are these two spaces which are for these stickers. You can choose if you want to use the one which has velcros or the other which is using magnets. So it depends on how you want to attach it. When the case fans are connected to this unit, it allows them to run even after shutdown for a minute to get rid of the residual heat. It also supports three semi-fanless modes, Whisper, Silence and Off mode. When the Whisper mode is activated, the fans are switched off until the system reaches 40% load and then it turns them on. When the Silence mode is activated, the same thing happens, but 55% load has to be reached. And when it's in Off mode, then the motherboard fully controls the fans depending on your PWM settings. To tell the truth, I don't see myself using it. I want my case fans running all the time at my custom set speed 
and I don't think one minute runtime after shutdown will make any difference. But that is just my opinion and other people may find it useful. Finally, let's have a look at the power supply. I'll take it out of its sack. As I'm holding it, it's really heavy. It weighs 2.4 kilograms. So what we should do now is to measure its dimensions. The thickness is 20 centimeters, which is longer than the usual power supplies. Then when we look at the height, it's 8.5, which is standard ATX. And the length is 15 centimeters, which is also standard ATX. The Max Titan series of power supplies uses a semi-fanless control and allows completely silent operation up to 70% load, which is, in case of this 1050 watt unit, 735 watts. It would have been nice if it allowed switching between active and passive cooling using a button like the Sonic power supplies, but the fanless operation is the main reason I chose this unit, so it's not a problem for me. The fan inside is a 13.9 mm Enermax fan with patented twisted bearing, which works silently and has long lifespan of up to 160,000 hours, which is 18.264 years, so basically forever. It also has DFR technology, which stands for dust-free rotation, which is supposed to reduce the accumulation of dust on the fan blades. After starting the power supply, the fan spins in reverse at full speed for a few seconds, which removes the settled dust, and then it returns to normal operation. I like it because it might happen that I reach 70% load on this power supply only very rarely, and the dust would just keep building up over time. So let's take a look at the connectors. We can see that all of the connectors, or most of them, are covered with these dust protectors, which is a nice touch. They can be removed easily. The number of connectors equals the number of cables, so there is nothing really special about it. It is possible to interchange the cables when plugging them to the power supply. CPU and PCI Express connectors are the same so make sure to check their labels before connecting them. If you want to take a look at the numbers, here is the back of the power supply, so I'll try to move it into the camera. When we look at this side of the power supply, we can see a large on and off switch, so let's try it. It clicks really heavily and I like it because I like to know when it's pressed. And here is a wattage meter. It lights up red and shows you current power usage, not the power draw. It is a bit of disappointment, but it's better than nothing. I wish they didn't put it at the back of the power supply and instead made this display separate and connect it by a wire to the unit so that it could be placed inside the case with a window at some well visible place of my choosing or outside the case. The best would be a software option which would allow me to see current power draw on the computer screen. But they just me daydreaming a little. This power supply is ERP 2013 and 2014 ready. ERP stands for Energy Related Products, sometimes EUP shortcut is used, which means energy using product. It is a regulation established by European Union, which defines the power consumption of the completed system. It states that the AC power of the completed system shall be under 0.5 watts in off-mode condition. 
If you use this power supply in combination with an ERP ready motherboard, then it will start saving you energy. It will also disable some wake up functions in S5 state, which stands for shutdown. And these are PME event wake up, power on by mouse, power on by keyboard and wake on LAN, just for you to know which would be disabled. But if you don't use these wake up possibilities, there is really no reason not to enable this function in BIOS and save some energy when your computer is in standby. Out of curiosity, I wanted to check out the wattage meter, so I used my energy logger, which is quite accurate. I found out that the actual power load displayed on the power supply has a slight delay, but the values it is showing are not far from reality. If we subtract the current load on the wattage meter from the power draw on the plug, which is visible on the energy logger, we should get how much energy is lost in form of the heat. It looks like that when the power supply is loaded at 240 to 244 watts when running Cinebench R20, the power draw is 260 watts. That tells us that somewhere between 16 to 20 watts is lost as heat and that with 22.8% load on the power supply we are getting somewhere between 92.3 and 93.8% power efficiency, which is not bad. This measuring is rough indication that the power supply works close to where it should be. If its wattage meter is showing load values correctly. The fan on this unit wasn't moving at all and was completely silent. So overall, this unit looks promising. Enermax's box says that this power supply has a 5 year warranty. The website says 10 years, so I don't know which one is it. <laughs> but I already have another Enermax unit which has been in my PC running for 12 years. So I have no trouble believing that the unit will stay alive for 10 years. I have never spent this much time on a power supply before but I guess it was worth it because this was an interesting piece. If you have any additional questions about it, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. And I guess it's time to wrap it up. So thank you for watching and see you in another video.